Those who build their own digital audio system know that one of the ultimate software solutions in this area is Rune. Rune is an entire ecosystem that automatically maintains your digital library. Scans, catalogs, adds cover arts, creates descriptions and, of course, plays files. However, to use it you need hardware – a computer, a suitable NAS server, or if you want to go the whole hog, then there is a proprietary device – a server and transport from Rune Labs. But I have found something more advanced. So here is a device beautifully named MU1. It was made by the Dutch company Grim Audio, a true legend in the world of professional studio sound. If suddenly you haven't heard about them, the company was founded in 2004 by two interesting people. The first one is Elko Grim, a sound engineer and lecturer at the Faculty of Music and Technology at the HKU University of the Arts Utrecht. In general, he is, it's a quote, internationally recognized expert in loudness normalization matters, contributing to EBU R128 for broadcast and AES TD1008 for music streaming, owner of the Fairy Tapes company for recording and acoustic consultancy, former editor in chief of the leading Dutch professional audio magazine Pro Audio Magazine, married to his Brompton folding bike. The second person is Guido Tent, electrical engineer, responsible for development, supply chain and sales, driving to create, run a career in analog electronics, RF and EMC, silicon and system design at Philips, former lecturer at Fontys University of Applied Science Eindhoven. Grim Audio has built a reputation for making exceptional studio gear. Discerning studios use their decks, ADCs and clocks, and even special studio cables they make. As is often the case with great things, the fame of Grim Audio equipment began to rush way ahead of the evidence, and audiophiles began to buy their decks and master clocks for their home setups. Grim understood the trend and made a home device, our MU1. And to understand what it's capable of, I grabbed their UC1 Studio Deck and CC1 Master Clock. So I got a mono brand bundle of transport, deck and clock. By the way, a funny fact is that on the company's website this clock is available both in the professional products section and in the hi-fi section. But of course, the deck and clock have remained absolutely professional studio devices, they aren't upgraded for home use. Look, even the rack mounts are in place. Are these just such cool devices that you should definitely take them home? The front panels of the deck and the clock, to put it mildly, are not luxurious. The display is inexpensive, with a low resolution, the knobs are plastic. It's true, there is absolutely no sophistication, premium finish and elegant design in these studio components. Both of them are hardcore studio workers and everything here is solely for the sound, but not for the look. You say, well, why do I need all this at home? The fact is that this small, modest looking device is considered a truly iconic one. This is one of the best studio clocks in the world, and the term Grim Clock has long become an identifying moniker. So you can consider that Grim Audio are the gods of master clocks. Actually, the deck is no less good, it's also a balanced preamp and a headphone amplifier. So I have it directly connected to the power amp, forming a pretty advanced system. Transport, deck with an external clock, AB power amp and electrostatic speakers. Ok, let's get on with our main character. The Dutch at some point decided to build the most accurate sound source imaginable and made MU1. An absolute consumer, but the ultimate component. So, this is a digital player, a Linux-based transport, made specifically to be the Rune Core. The Dutch even developed it in collaboration with Rune Labs, although they didn't use the Rune Labs code, but completely wrote their own, unique engine. If you don't have a Rune account, then most of the power of this device won't be available. 
Although, in addition to its main rune purpose, MU1 can play files from digital media connected to it and from Tidal and Cobas. On the back panel it has AES3, SPDIF and optical inputs and a pair of USB-A for connecting external drives. I don't know if you'll ever use them, because a 4TB SSD drive is already installed inside. The outputs are also digital only, two AES3 and one coaxial output. By the way, there is an interesting connector reminiscent of Ethernet. This is a proprietary bus for connecting with related LS1 active speakers that have their own deck on board. Those speakers are pretty crazy and the MU1 was largely designed to pair with them. But we'll talk about them next time. Don't forget to subscribe to this channel so you don't miss this video, it's pretty sick. So, MU1 is an audio file server and an absolutely universal machine for playing any digital format. Inside, at the hardware level, this is a device built specifically for the careful storage reading of a digital audio signal and transporting it to an external DAC. What can we expect from digital transport? This is just a computer that reads files and sends them to an external DAC. There is no analog conversion in it, which it would seem mainly affects the sound. But this isn't entirely true. This transport takes care of the initial data resampling before streaming it to the DAC, since it has noticeably higher computational capabilities and some kind of special digital filtering. But this only happens if you connect it to the DAC via the AES3 bus. This feature makes it a completely unusual device. Its core is a proprietary gate array with an outstanding resampler. In order for it to work well, quite advanced hardware is required, because this is a very resource-intensive process. Even in studios, many mastering engineers do it not in real time, but at a lower speed, so that everything happens with the highest quality. Plus, a good resampler needs a very high-quality master clock, and MU1 has it right inside. In any case, for us as end-users, a good dress is a card of invitation. The device really looks luxurious. A compact case made of anodized aluminum with a top cover that gracefully sags in the center under a large golden metal disc, which is the only control element of the device. The MU1 looks and feels really expensive, especially compared to its studio counterparts. I'll tell you how much it costs at the end, so as not to shock you right away. On the front there is a green logo with an LED that glows when the device is turned on, and a small color display showing ample playback information and settings menu. Nothing else, not a single button. Although on its back, next to the mains connector, there is a small power button, which can quickly turn it on or off. By the way, despite the fact that this button is blind, you always accurately hit it with your finger. The golden disc, when it's rotated, works as a volume knob. A short press stops and resumes playback. A long press brings up a settings menu, where you can choose the upsampler's paranoia. We'll talk about it separately. And the really important feature, the brightness of the LED in the logo. Well, by the way, there you can also teach the device commands from absolutely any remote control if desired. Now about the user experience. Since this is a rune core, then in fact all its ergonomics are rune ergonomics. MU1 is an inseparable part of this ecosystem. By the way, its manual describes in detail what settings you need to make in rune for it to operate at its best. There literally need to check a couple of points, but nevertheless, you were taken care of. In fact, the entire process of installing the device is just connecting the cables. As soon as it powered on, the rune started recognizing it. All I had to do was activate the device in the rune settings among the available audio devices. I won't tell you how to use Rune, but finally, by installing this mini monster in your system, you control it through applications on your phone, tablet or directly from your computer, there is no difference. Moreover, on the local network, its hard drive is available to you, so you can directly throw your entire file library there, and the Rune will immediately pick it up. 
Practically, when using the MU1, you have almost no physical interaction with it. The most of the time it just stands and decorates your interior. Well, except that it's always nice to come up and turn up the volume by spinning this glided plate. It's heavy and rotates with pleasant inertia. Nice! And yet, it connects to your network exclusively via Ethernet. This device is very purist in its philosophy and doesn't allow anything extra like Wi-Fi, Bluetooth or something else. So, since we've already connected it, let's talk about the sound. Because to say that I was surprised is to say nothing. The fact is that MU1 itself was so good that I couldn't even find the words at first. When I turned it on for the first time, I was just stunned. When I turned on Rune to understand is there any sound at all, the first thing that came to my hand was the very Alphaville album where all their main hits, which everyone is already tired of. I would never have thought that I would recommend you to listen to Alphaville on such a device. But I sat down and couldn't tear myself away. This is something incredible. As if I had changed the speakers. I have never heard them so clear and pure in my life. I sat and thought, damn it, is that my ESLX and my Parasound can do this? Well, of course, I immediately thought that this was cool deck work, despite being a freak with rack ears. Then I decided to try changing the deck to MyTech Brooklyn, which I have. And again, the same amazing clarity, but with Brooklyn's signature. Not bad for just soulless digital transport. In general, if we discard the signatures of decks, which I personally noticed in comparison to my Rune Core on Mac Mini, even so the comparison is completely incorrect. You can't compare a scooter with a yacht, but still. MU1 is amazingly transparent and pure. The sound from it has no veil, mutedness or something like that. Feeling the absolute absence of any sound restricting factors. The last time I saw something up close was with the crazy audiophile Fidata server, but there was a chain of cool components that created the sound. But here one digital transport with two different decks shows the same level of sound clarity. Moreover, this is largely due to the proprietary resampler. To this day I don't remember a single device on which I would prefer to turn it on. I always turn off resampling, because I like the sound less with it. Here is a completely different story. Everything is exactly the opposite. For example, let's take Fila Brasilia's great 1999 album. It's such a classic English downtempo with heavily mixed samples of everything from nature sounds and synth to brass instruments of all kinds. And while experimenting with upsampling on it, there are two possible modes and off mode, I definitely choose the maximum upsampling. With it the sound becomes more refined, better defined and there is that same feeling of absolute clarity that won me over when I accidentally turned on the damn Alphaville. So, the new album of the Swedish post-metal band Cult of Luna confirms the fact that upsampling is beneficial. Without it, the sound becomes a little more relaxed and with it just crystal clear. Cult of Luna is such an atmospheric, gloomy sludge that slowly rolls over you, eventually turning into a noisy, sometimes pretentious, large-scale dramatic action with very dark guitars. On such noisy music, even on very good systems, you can often see how the setup starts to put everything together. In such a rich stream of different noise sounds, it becomes difficult for the brain to localize and separate individual sounds from each other, and even entire instruments are sometimes lost, but not with Grimm. My setup hasn't lost this clarity in any moment, even the most noisy one. The scene is always lively, dynamic, everything is clearly laid out in space, and every little thing exists in its own, clearly distinguishable point. On heavy music these abilities are very impressive. In addition, I listen to electrostatic speakers, and they aren't always friendly with heavy music. I'm really impressed with this, it has formed the feeling of clarity and purity of the soundtrack. At the same time, I cannot say that this clarity is due to the studio signature. There is nothing like that. Even with a studio deck, the sound isn't lifeless, cold or somehow over tech like in studio monitors. Grim devices didn't sound like an engineer's instrument to me. 
Yes, they show a lot, probably everything that is on the record, but they don't kill the life in the sound. What's in the cons? Firstly, it's beauty. For the sake of this cool look, they sacrificed convenience. For example, you cannot change tracks directly on the device. This can only be done from the Rune application. Second, it doesn't show cover arts. And thirdly, it's price. It costs twelve and a half thousand dollars, if I'm not mistaken. It's pretty expensive. But still, MU1 is one of the best modern transport with a sound that blew my mind. And it really is the best Rune server I know. So, for those who are going to link their ultimate system with Rune, this weird but fancy device is one of the best options for today.